Hi, my name is Ben Gramico. I'm a certified master inspector, CMI. I'm a certified course instructor, and I've got here a FLIR um, B-CAM SD infrared camera, and I also have a moisture meter, and we're going to use both to look for moisture down in the basement and maybe in a couple of other areas. We're going to um, look for air infiltration, maybe do kind of like an energy audit of the house, look at the insulation around the house, and we're also going to look at some components and take some pictures along the way. So let's go inside. So we're down in the basement and when you do an inspection um, you have to orient yourself when you come down the stairs to the basement especially when you're looking for moisture. You have to know what the exterior walls are. So in this part of the bedroom, well this is a bedroom even though technically by code and standard it's not a bedroom, doesn't have a closet, but it's definitely being used as a bedroom and these finished walls here. This is a great place for uh, moisture inspection, especially with the window well. This sometimes uh, collects a lot of water. So um, this is the rear wall to orient yourself. Rear exterior wall, um, window well, great place to look for moisture. That's an exterior wall over there. This is a shared wall with the neighbor. I'm not too concerned about moisture going over here, but I'll take a look at it anyways. And the areas that I look for are um, the bottom corners where the baseboards are. I'm looking for watermarks, um, stains in the carpeting. Um, I'm not going to move this bed. Wish I could pull it out. Maybe I will if I see something. Um, the window well is a great place for uh, a moisture inspection. There's really three places that you want to look. Below the window frame because water can collect. If it's not draining properly outside the window well, it'll um, come in into the basement here. And also, uh, second and third places. Second place is here, where the window frame is. The bottom corner sometimes collects water. And then there could be a flashing problem um, up on the, pot, on the top where the header is. So this area here sometimes collects water. And then, actually, we'll go back up outside. When we came down, we realized that we're going to be partially underneath the deck. Above us, actually, this is an interesting house. Outside, there's a deck. When you go out the rear slider door, you walk out onto a deck, which is above this finished area right here. So, and it's not covered. So when you see an exterior deck that's not covered, it has a flat roof under it, you have to be concerned about what's underneath the deck, what's underneath the roof underneath the deck. And it's this bedroom ceiling. So just visually, doing a visual inspection, you have to orient yourself, figure out the key areas where you want to inspect, and then, this is the one critical area. It's underneath this deck. And right here, I really don't see anything visually. There aren't any watermarks, any water stains, no water damage. There are, um, there are some water stains. I correct, correction. There are water stains right here. There's a brown water streak. There's a brown water streak here. There's a, um, a water mark here. I'm smiling because I'm, I'm trying to do an educational video. During inspection, I, I don't smile. I'm, actually, there's three things that I do. I try to be calm, try to be quiet, and then I confirm before I say a word about any kind of water, before I make any deductions or um, conclusions about water penetration or water problems. So right here, remember this is the deck area, and this is probably where the exterior wall is because of this load-bearing beam. And this is where the slider door is. Old slider door. This is a 25-year-old house. Original slider door probably has some tread problems, flashing problems, sealant problems. Could be the roof, could be the deck. And there are watermarks, real faint watermarks here. A home inspector just can't come in and do an inspection of one system or component without thinking about the entire house. It's a dynamic situation. So really, you have to orient yourself. You have to figure out what are the key areas to look at. You have to figure out where the, in this case, the deck is. And you also have to look with your eyes and figure out where things are and probable causes of water. So I'm going to get my moisture meter. It doesn't feel damp. There aren't any water droplets. But I'll get my moisture meter, use my infrared camera here, but visually, um, I, I would say this is the critical area. 
Now, if I didn't have these tools, the infrared camera and the moisture meter, that would be a pretty good conclusion. I would say that there's some kind of water penetration problem, possibly. Um, it's not wet to the touch because I don't have any tools to use, and I would um, recommend further investigation. But we have the infrared camera, so I'm going to use these tools. I've actually done a lot of inspection in this one little area before even picking up an infrared camera. So that's a, that's a good recommendation and a good thing to be concerned with. Do as much as you can. What, um, well, real quick, just real quick, I see um, an anomaly. Um, something that really shouldn't be there. And I'll, I'll describe it. It's a, it's a water stain here. And now I can see maybe visually where this could be a water area. Um, it's cool here. There are some dark areas right here. Looks like there's some water stains, water stain, water stain there. With an infrared camera, you can scan a large amount fairly quickly. There are some inspectors who just use the moisture meter. Now, if I was going to use this, it's hard to scan the entire wall. You'd have to rub this one. This one uses contact. You have to rub the entire wall to look for moisture. Rub the entire ceiling to look for moisture. But the infrared camera, actually, I turned it on in just a, a, a second. I could see that we have a, a, probably a water problem. But, you know, be calm, be quiet, and then confirm. So I'm going to use my survey master, my protometer. And see if we got anything here. So we have some moisture there. We've got moisture there for sure. And this is right in the area of the infrared camera. And I'll take some pictures for you so everybody can see what I'm seeing. So there's definitely an active water penetration problem here. Probably the deck problem. There could be a flashing or a roof problem that's underneath the deck. Remember those water marks? Um, slight elevation and moisture. Nothing too serious though. Here. It's all green actually. A little bit there, a little bit there. Not bad. Now, um, there's two things you keep in mind when you're doing an evaluation for moisture or um, any kind of evaluation with an infrared camera as a home inspector. There's quantitative or qualitative. So quantitative is measurement, exact temperature measurement. As a home inspector, I'm not really concerned about exact temperature measurements. I'm not doing any calibrations, not uh, focusing in to get the exact temperature of this water stain. It's really qualitative. We're just looking for abnormalities, trying to analyze the situation, trying to figure out what's going on, and pinpointing, not really pinpointing, but generally um, getting the, the area of attention in your report. So I'm going to get this rear window, this rear corner, and this beam all in the picture. I'm going to take a, the picture of the problem area, and we'll put that in the report so everybody can see. And this is good composition for your inspection report. So um, we've got an uh, active water problem. I'm just going to quickly continue with my infrared camera inspection. I'll go from left to right. This is the rear wall. And with the FLIRT, you have a manual focus. And you also have to be concerned also about your angle when you're looking because things can look a little different at different angles. When actually you do a ceiling, it's this one you have to do like this. Really, FLIR needs to uh, swivel out the screen so you can do your ceiling inspection. It's hard to look like this, but anyways. So this is the window well. 
nothing abnormal at all. Looking for cool spots. Water penetration usually is cool, like a black area. And my other areas of the window, areas of concern, really don't see anything. Didn't see anything visually, don't see anything with the infrared. And I'm not going to confirm anything else with my protometer, moisture meter. So that was interesting. So I'll go back upstairs with you and I'll show you the deck area and we'll maybe figure out some more stuff. What's causing this water penetration problem that I really didn't see with my eyes. I did pick up quickly with the infrared and I confirmed it with my moisture meter. So we're outside on the back deck and I wanted to show you where we're oriented in relation to the deck and the water problems that we found downstairs. So we're in the back of the house, you walk out the slider door, and at my feet here is that beam that runs all along the ceiling of the basement bedroom. And we have a, an area here of concern because of those water marks. This is a 25, 30 year old slider door that apparently hasn't been moved. The other things around the door may have moved, so that could have caused the problem. When you remove an old deck and the old roofing material underneath, it's a hard um, task to get that flashing area just right and watertight where the flashing in the deck meets the bottom of the slider door because um, unless you remove the slider door, that's really what's required. I don't think this door has been moved. What you need to do is pull the whole door out, um, get your flashing details just right where the flashing meets the slider door and then put the slider door back in place. It probably wasn't done. The main water leak, though, that we saw that was actually wet is in this area. Again, we have another slider door going to the deck area, and that at this intersection is a critical flashing area. Um, we're restricted from our inspection in many ways. I can see that the roofing material below is there, but I don't know what the age is, don't know what its condition. All we know is for sure we have a water penetration problem and that it's coming from this probable area right here. So let's try a um, kind of like an energy audit. We've had the central air on for a long time. It's about 72 degrees, I'm looking at the thermostat, and it's almost 90 degrees outside. So we've got that great delta T. What we're going to do is um, turn on some exhaust fans and um, close the windows and doors, turn down the um, appliances that are fuel fired, like the gas hot water tank and the heating system, make sure that they don't fire up and don't turn on the, any other appliances. And we're going to um, uh, have those exhaust fans turning on to make a low air pressure system in the house. And we're going to um, exaggerate uh, air infiltration to look for um, hot air coming through certain areas, typically around gaps and um, defects, possible defects, apparent defects in the insulation barrier of the house, around windows, doors, um, wherever there's a, a penetration through the wall. Um, we're going to take a look at the insulation value of the attic ceiling. There's an attic hatch, I believe, in this house. And uh, one of the things is if you're going to do it in the winter time and the fireplace is on, that's really great because that's sucking a lot of air. You can get several hundred cubic feet per minute being sucked out of the fireplace during the winter time. So you can look for cool air coming in. In the summertime, turn on the air conditioner if you have one, trying to get that delta T, and turn on fans. We have an exhaust fan at the kitchen hood. That's maybe 5 to 15 cubic feet per minute. We have a couple bathrooms. There's three and a half bathrooms in this house. Each bathroom has a fan. So you can add those up. You get a couple hundred cubic feet per minute there. And um, you can turn on the dryer. And a dryer typically is uh, two to 300 cubic feet per minute. So you can draw outside air in with those exhaust fans. So um, we're going to close the windows and doors and also make sure that the fireplace damper is closed. Otherwise, I'll just be sucking air right down the chimney. So we're going to close things up. Close all the windows and doors, fireplace damper. Turn down the appliances that are fuel-fired so we don't get any backdrafting or carbon monoxide. And then turn on the fans. And then use your our infrared camera to take a look around. 
Okay, so we got kind of lucky at this house. We have a house fan, um, a whole house ventilation fan. This draws a lot of air uh, from the house right out through the attic, pushing it into the attic and outside the vents. And this is going to do, I don't know how big this fan is. They're usually really big, many hundreds of cubic feet per minute. So this is really nice. This is going to pull a lot of hot air through the, those um, parent defect areas that we may find in this house. It's an older house, almost 30 years old. The insulation value may not be all that great in certain areas. It's on a timer. That's high. I'm going to leave it on high. So everything's closed up. I'm producing a low air pressure system using this exhaust fan. I'm going to let that run for about 15 minutes. I like to do it for about 15 minutes. And then um, that will give us some really good airflow patterns coming from certain areas, typically around windows and doors. So we've been running the fan for a long time. And it's hot outside, so we've got a good delta T. And we're exaggerating air infiltration by turning on the fan and closing all the windows and doors. And this is the second floor. And I'm looking at the second floor ceiling with my infrared camera, looking for hot spots. And I do see areas in need of improvement. There's some hot spots here where there's apparently a lack of insulation in this area. I'll take some pictures here. And what you see in the picture now are the bays where the roof rafters are probably trusses up in the attic, haven't been in the attic yet. And the red areas and white areas, they're red hot. That's about 97 degrees, that area right there in the picture that you see. So that's on the edge, and that's actually typical. So I think there's probably some insulation that needs to be improved right here. Let's go in the other areas. So using the infrared camera, I can quickly scan effectively scan a large area of the house looking for, well, hot spots in this case. And we do actually have some hot spots. I'll take a picture of it. It's in, oh, I like this infrared camera because we have a laser. So it's in this area here. It must be missing insulation. And there's also a hot spot right around that smoke detector. And probably um, this has been installed after the house was built. The installer went up there, has a box, some wires, moved the insulation away in order to install the new um, smoke detector, which was probably required when the house was um, on the market or being sold, considered being sold. And so um, that insulation has been put back together. So there's a large area right here that's missing insulation, and that's an energy loss area. Here's that smoke detector that we saw in the ceiling below. The detector was installed and the insulation was pushed away and never replaced. Similar to water leaks around penetrations through a roof, there are air leaks typically around penetrations through the insulation barrier. And this is the bathroom and this is the ventilation fan, combination light vent fan. And there's usually um, a lack of insulation around these units. And with the infrared camera, I can see that there is a lot of hot air coming out from this fan, um, from this fan light component here. And I'll take a picture. And what we see is red hot, white hot actually, literally white hot air coming from the attic because we've been pulling air from the attic through. Here's the bathroom fan exhaust pipe. It's actually been detached. There's the fan there. Um, all vents need to go outside, including bathrooms and dryers and kitchen exhaust. But there's that lack of insulation there. Just for fun, we opened up the damper door for about 15 minutes or so at the fireplace and allowed that hot air from the chimney and the outside to come through. And in the infrared camera, you can see it actually is getting the fireplace nice and hot. about 86 degrees in that area and that's where there's a lot of airflow coming right through.
that screened in that, that front screen of the fireplace. So it's always important to close that damper door at the fireplace when you're doing one of these types of inspections. Here's another receptacle, wall receptacle on the exterior wall and the signature of excessive amount of heat coming out of that receptacle. So here's the front exterior door. And I'll take a picture of the area where there's lack of weather stripping. That's another area where you can focus your attention weather stripping. There's the ceiling light in one of the bedrooms and it is just on fire. You can see the red streaks of heat coming off of it. Here's another light fixture in another bedroom and it too has that same problem of energy loss. You can check wall switches for heat loss like at this switch. So scanning around, we could see there's another ceiling area. Um, if we focus in, there is a red hot spot in that area. And in the picture, you could see it's a, an odd shape, almost circular. And it's hot. It's almost 100 degrees hot. And it's in this area here. So we haven't been in the attic yet, but we're going to go there next. And I bet there's areas of missing insulation. So another area that you can inspect with your infrared camera is the attic access, the hatch. Typically, in my experience, it's, it's missing insulation on almost every inspection. Someone's gone up there, the phone, the cable has been installed, and the insulation wasn't put back in place. And with the infrared camera, you can quickly see, I'll take a picture, you see the square, it's red, it's on fire, it's hot. So it's a lack of insulation there. It's really just missing, probably. So let's go up into the attic. So we're in the attic, and it's really hot. It's maybe 120 degrees up in here. And um, there are insulation issues that need to be addressed. First of all, they have some flooring down, and uh, I guess it's used for storage. But the flooring is um, compressing the insulation and the floor joists or ceiling rafters is the bottom cord of a truss and that's only a two by four so it's three and a half inches thick of insulation underneath this storage area with the flooring so that's a, a lack of insulation should be very thick and we have um, other areas where the insulation is missing and the whole house fan is not insulated with a cap so in the winter time this really is just a large hole for energy loss. There are areas where electrical lines and phone lines have been um, installed and the insulation has been removed but not put, put back. So I see that wall back there and I see over there and there and there all along that area where we saw in those bedroom ceilings, hot areas, there's actually missing insulation. The insulation has either been blown away because of the high winds in Colorado and there aren't any baffles or something else is going on there. And taking a look at the insulation at the eaves, you can see that the insulation has been batted down, pushed away, and it's not very thick at all. So all of this, you can see the actual uh, bottom cord of the trusses too. They're exposed. So it's less than three and a half inches thick. Some areas it's bare. So there's a lot of areas that need to be addressed in order to um, bring this insulation value up to something that's adequate. Well, one of the interesting things that a home inspector does with his time is inspect a bathroom and the area around the bathroom toilet. Um, whenever I see a carpet that's secured to the floor, I put in my report a narrative that describes the contamination issue because this carpet can't simply be picked up and put in the clothes washer if the toilet overflows. So whenever I see a carpet around here, I um, try to evaluate if this toilet is leaking by flushing it a couple times. I won't do it right now, but looking for stains. And unfortunately, if you don't have a moisture meter, I'm not sure how you would tell if this toilet wax seal is leaking or not. If you have a moisture meter, great. If you have an infrared camera 
even better because you really don't want to be touching in any area around this carpeting. So um, around this one, um, we're kind of fortunate. Um, we have, uh, I guess, a, a leak coming from the wax seal. Um, I'll take a picture of it with the infrared. It is clearly coming from the base of this toilet on the right side. I'll flush it a couple times, but it's already wet with my infrared camera. I don't even have to flush the toilet. I know that there's a, a leak coming from this area here. And um, it's, it's nowhere else, and it's a circular pattern. So we have a wax seal problem. It's be because probably this toilet is a little bit loose on the bottom. Um, the way I do it is I get my foot and I use the side of my leg. I try not to touch the toilet. You know, your health and safety is really important. A glove actually would be nice, but you really can't touch anything wet with your glove on. So an infrared camera, once again, comes in very easily. I can very easily see that there's a watermark at this area and that the toilet is definitely leaking. But remember, be quiet, be calm, and then confirm if you can. And yeah, definitely, for sure. And it's not a leak from the tank. I made that mistake before. You know, the, the tank has bolts underneath, rusts out, and it can drip. There are no rust marks on the carpeting, and there are no drips in those two areas. And it's not the water valve. I usually just put my hand underneath each valve, even underneath the bathroom sinks. So this toilet needs to be pulled up by a plumber and the wax seal replaced. And that it was all done actually very quickly, within a second or two, with the infrared camera.